Today, I'm going to put the 500 rule to the test. If you're not sure what the 500 rule is, it's basically a calculation to work out how long you can keep your shutter speed open for before the stars start streaking. So instead of the stars looking like round circles, they start looking like ovals. If you're not sure how to take photographs of the stars but want to learn more, click on the eye in the corner. This will take you to one of my videos taking you step by step through the process. What I've done is taken a series of shots from 15 second exposures right through to one minute exposures. I have a cropped censored camera and a full frame camera, and I'm gonna see how much these rules need to be enforced so you get good looking stars. Well, when I say I've got a crop sensor, I'm gonna shoot on the crop mode on the A7R2. So this will represent a crop censored camera. For a full frame sensor, Take your focal length and divide 500 by that focal length. For a crop sensor, take your focal length and divide 300 by your focal length. With a full frame at 14 millimeters, 500 divided by 14 equals 35.7. So that's an exposure of 35.7 seconds. With the 24 millimeter, I take 500 and divide it by 24. This gives me 20.8 seconds. With the crop sensor, at 10 millimeters, I take 300 and divide it by 10, which gives me an exposure of 30 seconds. With the 14 millimeter on a crop sensor, that's 300 divided by 14, so that's an exposure of 21.4 seconds. So if you look at the maths alone, you can see why a full frame sensor is much better for astrophotography, at least with widescape astrophotography, where you want to get as much of the sky in as possible. And with the relatively low cost of the A7 III and the really cheap A7 II, there's never been a better time to get into astrophotography. So here are the images. I've dropped the saturation down to minus 100 so the color doesn't distract. I'll make it full screen. This is at 20 seconds. It's at 25. This is at 30, 35, 40. You can see the stars are really starting to streak up in this top corner. By 50 seconds, you can see those all of the stars in the shots are ovals. Even when I reduce it to this size in the frame, you can still see how streaked those stars are up here. I found with the 10 to 18 millimeter lens I was using, there was a lot of distortion, which made the stars appear oval shaped towards the edges of the frame with almost any shutter speed I used. At 10 millimeters with the 300 rule, I should be able to expose the shot for 30 seconds. However, I would not go above 20 seconds and I wouldn't use the Sony 10 to 18 millimeter F4 lens because of the distortion. You can see in this shot, oval stars in the top right hand corner. With a crop sensor at 14 millimeters, the calculation comes out at 21.4 seconds. So I've started at 20 seconds and the stars look okay. As I go through the shots, that's at 25, that's at 30. You can see these stars over here are starting to streak. A plane came through the shot and that's that streak at the bottom. But if you look at the stars, they're all starting to streak now. So if we zoom into the middle, you can see they're more oval shapes than circles. At just over a minute, you can see they really start to streak. So you can see this calculation is really important. If I select the 20 second and the one minute and six second shot and make it full frame, when I switch between the two shots, you can really see the difference. If you ignore the light streaks from the planes and just look at the stars in the center area, you can see here they're streaks. Whereas when we go to the 20 second one, they're pinpoint stars. Now I've changed the A7R to the full frame setting. So I've come out of the crop setting. I'm using a 14 millimeter lens. So let's see what we can get away with. With the 500 rule calculation, if I take 500 and divide it by 14, that'll give me 35.7 seconds. So I've started at 15 and I've gone through to one minute and 10 seconds. So at 15 seconds, you can see the stars are really good pinpoints. They're all still circular. So at 20 seconds, 25 seconds, 30 seconds. When I'm using this lens, 30 seconds is normally as far as I'll go with a 14 millimeter on a full frame camera. 
I can go up to 35 seconds using the 500 calculation, but I tend to keep it to 30 seconds at a maximum. So we go to 35, 40, 45, this is 50, 55, and you can really see the stars are starting to streak now. Also, one thing to note with this lens, there's a lot of distortion on the edges. So the streaks will actually look longer towards the sides. And this is one thing to think about when choosing a lens. You have something like the 14 millimeter Samyang that has a lot of distortion on the edges. Whereas if you spend more money and get the lower 15 millimeter F2, that has a lot less distortion. So this is at 55 seconds and this is at one minute. Now we have oval stars and the Milky Way is starting to blur. So if I go back to 15 seconds, you can see the Milky Way is much clearer and the stars are more circular. So next we have the sequence of the full frame camera with a 25 millimeter Batis. So you can see it's cropped tighter on the Milky Way. At 15 seconds, you can see the stars are circular. I really like this exposure length for astrophotography. And if there's enough light about, I'll try and keep it between 13 and 15 seconds. This then gives me a bit of leeway and it means that my stars are gonna be more circular. Then at 20 seconds, still looking okay. 25, you could probably get away with that on Instagram because the image is a lot smaller. So this is at 30 seconds on the 25 millimeter. You can see the stars are starting to look more oval. I wouldn't be happy with this and I would drop my shutter speed down. Then at 35, 40, 45, 50. At 50 seconds, they're really starting to streak. If you want to get the stars streaking in your shots, what you wanna do is do really long exposures and then stack all these together and then you'll get really long star streaks. This can look really nice, but if you want pinpoint stars, you have to follow this rule. At one minute, the stars are really streaking and you really wouldn't wanna take a shot with this longer exposure unless you are using a tracking system. So again, if I select the 15 second shot and the one minute shot and switch between the two, as you can see, the 15 second shot has nice pinpoint stars, whereas the one minute shot looks streaky and blurry. It doesn't look good at all. So as you can see from these series of shots, the 500 rule is really important. And if you're on a crop sensor, it's the 300 rule. If you zoom in enough though, you will see the streaks. So if you pixel peep, the stars will still look oval. Basically, the bigger that you're gonna print the image or the bigger the image is gonna be, the more you'll see these streaks. If you're posting to something like Instagram or a social media site that has relatively low resolutions, you can get away with slightly longer exposure times. But as a rule, I'd stick to the 500 rule. And that's about it. If you're going out and shooting the stars, make sure you follow the 500 rule if you're on a full frame sensor and the 300 rule when you're on a crop sensor. Also, if you're using something like the 14 millimeter Samyang that has a lot of distortion on the edges, I'd keep the exposure time a little bit shorter. With a 14 millimeter, I'd keep it to a maximum of 20 seconds. With the 24 millimeter Samyang, the distortion is less, but still I'd keep that below 20 seconds as well. If you're on a crop sensor and you're using say a 10 millimeter, just see what the distortion is like in that lens. It's actually good to go out and do this test yourself. So you can work out what you can get away with with your camera. But as I said, I tend to shoot at around about 15 second exposures with my Astro shots. I'll bump the ISO up a little bit, but these modern day cameras can handle the higher ISOs. As always, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And for weekly tutorials, hints and tips in photography and videography, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll see you in the next one.